By all definition of the word horror, this is a horror movie. Pure balls to the wall, vomit inducing, screaming bloody horror. But for a genre that doesn't always get a lot of respect, this one is always considered a film legend. It won some Oscars and Golden Globes and all that shit, and it's always referred to as the scariest movie ever made. You may or may not agree, but back in 1973, there was no comparison. Now that's some freaky deaky shit. The special effects are a real show stealer, and I can't show you the best of it. One reason is that it gets so graphic that I might be crossing the line, and I also feel that I'd be doing an injustice to the film by spoiling it. Today, the breath, that fog you see, it would have been CG, but that room was really that cold. My favorite scene is actually the opening. It has such an eerie mood. You can tell some bad stuff is going to happen. The movie does a great job at grossing out and shocking its audience, but how it affects you on a deeper level is a personal experience. The question is, do you believe in the devil? Well, anyway, it might not be the scariest movie of all time, but it's still pretty damn scary, and when you see that talking face about. coming into your dreams, you'll know what I'm talking about. The Exorcist 2, The Heretic. It's laughable to even think that someone tried to make a sequel to The Exorcist. The first one, on top of being one of the most popular horror films, was probably the only pure horror film that received widespread Academy Awards. It won Best Sound, Best Adapted Screenplay, and nominated for several others, including Best Picture. With horror movies, that doesn't happen often. Slumdog Millionaire, No Country for Old Men, The Hurt Locker, put some zombies and vampires in those movies and see how many awards they get. So with that said, how do you make a sequel to such a critically acclaimed movie? Well, copying it would be a simple solution. Yeah, isn't that what they'd usually do? If something's successful, do it over again. This time they tried something different, which is commendable, but it might be a little too different. It suffers from the opposite problem. It's nothing at all like the first movie. They hired a director who didn't even like the original. The result is an experimental acid fest that merely banks on the concept using the title as bait to lure fans of the original into its mind-rotting trap. Linda Blair returns as Regan, now 18 years of age and surprisingly seductive. Her mom's out of the picture. Regan's in the care of Nurse Ratchet, undergoing counseling. She's hooked up to some hypnosis machine that allows two people to enter the same dream. Hmm, did Christopher Nolan see this? Also, there's this priest who's investigating the death of Father Marin from the first movie. More shit happens, then we're off to Africa. What are we watching right now? Holy shit, it's James Earl Jones! He turned into a, a leopard. Now he's dressed as a locust? What's going on here? This movie came out the same year as Star Wars. I'd like to think that when James Earl Jones was recording the voice for Darth Vader, he was still in the middle of filming Exorcist 2. Yeah, he was in the locust costume all along. Commander, tear this ship apart until you found those plans and bring me the passengers. I want them alive! Just to give you an example of how random this movie is, check out this scene where the priest confronts the witch doctor. The witch doctor spits out a tomato. It lands on a bed of spikes in the water. Now, watch what happens. Well, that was a bad idea. You might be thinking, what does any of this have to do with the exorcist? Well, there's not really an exorcism. And the heretic, I'm still not sure who or what that is. Maybe the heretic is the director of the film, I don't know. It should have been called Swarm of the Locust, because there are a lot of locusts in it. You do see Regan in the familiar makeup from the first movie, and there are flashback scenes with Max von Sydow, Father Marin from the original. Here, we learn some more of the backstory, and they name the demon that possessed Regan as Pazuzu. The first movie doesn't clarify that. The voice that comes out of Reagan identifies itself as the devil. And I'm the devil. But we never know for sure if it's just messing around. The opening scene suggests that it's Pazuzu because of the statue Father Marin sees. But the common viewer wouldn't know that. So we're left to wonder if the demon that possesses Reagan is the devil or not. And that's what I think makes the movie so interesting. You never know for sure. Of course, remember I'm talking about the movie, not the book. 
After all, the things the demon does are certainly horrible enough to be the devil, wouldn't you say? But anyway, this is the first movie where they call it Pazuzu. The sequel is still interesting to watch, the production values are high, but don't expect a coherent narrative. The movie's been beaten to death, filled with hallucinogens, gobbled up by Satan, shat out, flushed off the face of the earth, raped by aliens carrying intergalactic STDs, launched back to earth, injected with radioactive poison, eaten by Godzilla, and barfed onto the screen where it ended up being booed out of theaters. For real, they pulled this movie out of the theater immediately to be re-edited. The re-edit didn't help much. It's a hard movie to review and just as hard to watch. If you want the full effect, just watch the trailer. It's the most random montage of images and the most bizarre music combined. Massacre's Monster Madness. You'd think the series would have been doomed at any chance of making any further sequels, but then came along The Exorcist 3 Legion. This time, they got serious again, or at least tried to. The original author of The Exorcist, William Peter Blatty, wrote this sequel, both the book version and the screenplay. And not only that, he directed it. You can't get much closer to the original idea than that. No Linda Blair this time, but Jason Miller returns as Father Karras, the priest who fell down the stairs and died at the end of the original Exorcist. How does he come back? Well, apparently, when the demon Pazuzu, who was never called by name in the first movie, has been playing a game of soul-swapping for the past 15 years. Basically, the soul of a dead serial killer known as the Gemini Killer is in Father Karras' body. Now he's in an asylum, as an unidentified patient, and somehow in 15 years, no one has ever figured out that he looks just like Father Karras. Not until an old friend of Father Karras recognizes him, who is a detective following a recent string of murders which also bear a strange resemblance to the killings done by the deceased Gemini killer. The plot is strange and somewhat convoluted, and it moves along at a tediously slow pace, Almost every scene begins with a whole bunch of close-ups of whatever objects are in the room. I mean, it happens so often it could be a drinking game, but I wouldn't recommend it. I can see they're just trying to establish the mood and suspense, but my god. The entire movie is saved by one thing. Brad Dourif, who plays the Gemini Killer in the body of Father Karras. Yeah, they switch back and forth between the two players. I understand that it's a split personality, but it's not as if the character is actually changing between Father Karras and the Gemini Killer. It's always the Gemini Killer speaking, at least for the most part, and the detective never acknowledges the change, so it's not like it's happening in his mind either. It's really just for the audience. I don't fucking know, but no matter how confusing and undecided this movie gets, I can excuse it because Brad Dourif is absolutely amazing. The whole finale was added on by the studio executives because originally there was no exorcism anywhere in the movie. This isn't a typical case of studio executives ruining a movie. I think they made the right decision because the movie really needed it. Anyway, what can I say about this movie? It gets mixed opinions, and that's because it's a very mixed movie. When it gets good, it's good. I'd even say it's phenomenal. It just takes a while to get there. You need to have some patience with it. The plot isn't so great, but it has an indescribable creepy and powerful aura, and all the scenes with Brad Dourif shatter your senses. He will never get away! His pain will 